Gen X were traumatized kids. And all agree that if we're generalizing, Gen X is the worst generation. Okay, okay, if this is happening, if Gen Z is picking a fight with Gen X in the same way that millennials picked fights with boomers, I need you need to be prepared. Just to give my credentials, I am a cusp millennial, right? I'm one of the first ones, right? Meaning I have a lot of exposure to Gen X. My older brother is Gen X. He is firmly Gen X. And he is fair. The stereotype of Gen X, obviously, is that they don't care. They do not care. Right. And I think on the surface level, you think, OK, well, that's going to be easy then. No, there was almost no visual record of Gen X when they were younger. Gen X were traumatized kids. You know, it's funny because you have Gen Zers who are still trying to pick fights with Gen X and they really don't understand the childhoods of Gen X. Gen X grew up during a period of time where there is almost no visual records of their childhoods. And, you know, let sleeping dogs lie. Watch to the end of the video to understand the reasons why Gen X were traumatized kids, but still thrived regardless of that. And the consequences that Gen Z will face going into the future as they continue picking fights with Gen X. Now let's just go ahead and jump right back into the video. Meaning they could do whatever they wanted and not have to worry ever about a video resurfacing as they got older. You combine that with the fact that most of their parents are older boomers who gave them very little parental supervision, and that is a dangerous combination, my friends. A direct result of that is that the Gen X that you're seeing today are the ones that survived. They fear nothing. Millennials, like we were the first ones that had these programs and schools in place telling us that all the dangerous things we saw our older siblings doing were, were bad. As a result, many of the weak ones of us lived on. I'm a direct proof of that. So all I'm saying is just be careful. They're gonna act like they don't care but so do serial killers. And to any Gen X seeing this, know that I am saying this out of deep respect and also deep fear. X okay? No, seriously, are you guys okay? Are we okay? Hell, are you okay? We're not that weak generation that goes running off at the mouths of the complete strangers online, saying things that we wouldn't say to their faces. We're not that generation that's offended by everything while being ridiculously offensive to everyone else. We're that generation of hardback and paperback books in the Dewey Decimal System. You're that generation that fancies yourselves as scholars just because you can Google some information. You're that generation of a bunch of know-it-alls that can't even till a garden, drive a stick shift, or change a tire. If the internet was to ever go down, Gen X will be fine. Your generation would be in trouble. You're a bunch of loudmouth dumbasses with smartphones. And if you had a father around that was worth a damn, I would like to give him a call and let him know how you talk to people on the internet. Did I forget anybody? Gen X, Gen X, yes. I didn't forget Gen X because I'm the first year of Gen X, but everyone seems to forget Gen X. Last year, CBS News forgot Gen X. They did this thing about all the generations and they did silent generation boomers and then they just skipped over 65 million of us Jan Brady's and they went down to the millennials and the post millennials. But here's all you need to know about Gen X. We don't care. <laughs> We don't care. As a matter of fact, we kind of like it. We're like the secret dive bar that only the locals go to. <laughs> we don't advertise, but we'll never go out of business. That is us. We laid out in the sun with no sunscreen on giant sheets of aluminum foil <laughs> with baby oil and iodine. We sprayed sun in in our hair. We turned it orange. We don't care. We are the latchkey kids that sat in the way, way back seat of our mom's station wagon, rear facing at the people behind us. Just waving. Just waving. Just waving. Just waving. I'm going to need to be the one to explain to all of the 40 year old people and above. You guys keep sending out these thumbs up emojis and they look more like this to the Gen X, Z and millennials. We depict the thumbs up as a fuck you. It's rude. Oh, the thumbs up controversy of Gen Z. Here I thought my generation had cornered the market on generational grievances. Yeah, here you are taking offense to the digital equivalent of a polite nod. Generations before had wars and recessions and the rise of boy bands to fuel their fury. But an emoji is what you're getting riled up about? 
This is the hill you're choosing? You called out everybody over the age of 40. Then lumped Gen X, Gen Z, and millennials all together like they're at some under the hill house party. Just so we're clear, over 40 spans all of Gen X and elder millennials. If we wanted to flip you off, trust me, we wouldn't dress it up like some cute little thumbs up. We're not about that passive aggressive life. We like our aggression served straight up. If the middle finger's what we're aiming for, you're gonna get the real deal, not its polite cousin. The truth is, the only reason we use that emoji is because we're exhausted. After 40, every unnecessary word feels like running a marathon. We can say good job or got it or please for the love of all that is holy make this conversation stop with one of these, then so be it. We've reached an age where our give a damn is busted. And honestly, we'd rather save our typing fingers for Googling things like how to talk to Gen Z without causing an existential crisis. You see, Gen X grew up during a period of time where CPS was not doing their job. They were just in their infancy. And you could leave your kids at home with no supervision and nothing would essentially happen. If most of the boomers were to raise children, in today's day and age, the way that they they raised Gen X, they would be in prison and they would be serving decades in prison. I often tell the story of being five years old, pissing myself in kindergarten, my father coming to the school and telling me I have two choices. He can take me home and leave me there by myself, or I can stay in school and, and, and sit in the piss because he didn't bring me a clean pair of, of underwear. And my choices were basically stay at home alone at five, or sit in the piss. So I chose to sit in the piss. But it didn't really change anything because by six, I was at, at, by six, I was home alone all the time. You know, and of course, you know, you were told better not have any lights on. Okay, you don't have light bill money. Because you can get your butt kicked for that. So I'd sit in the dark. And when at that age, there were no video games. And you know, my parents were religious. They thought television was the satanic box. So there wasn't a lot of TV growing up. As a result, I would basically sit in the dark and just ponder with my thoughts and worrying that, you know, demons and ghosts would come to get me and pray to God that I would not die. It was a frightening childhood, a horrific childhood. I asked my mother for years, you know, to, do you think I had a good childhood? And, you know, she's a person that is very, very, she was very, very um, comfortable lying to me. But when I asked her that question, she would never. She would never, for years and years, she would not give me a straight answer. I would say, did I have a good childhood? I did my best. Okay, so that means that, you, that means you gave me a good childhood. Um, uh, it, it, was, it was a mix. So part of it was good, uh, some sort of way. Just say that you gave me a good childhood. To this day, my mother can never say that. You see, my mother... My parents, they did not raise us well, all right? They gave us nothing. We were poor kids. They had fun. They lived their lives. The boomers lived their lives to the, to the fullest. They partied, man. They were, up, they were out partying, having ice cream. When they'd come home, don't expect any ice cream for you, all right? Ice cream is for boomers. Ice cream, hagen dazs is for the boomers, all right? You know, Gen X, Gen X can figure it out on their own. And then basically, they could tell you to stay inside when they wanted you to stay inside. And then suddenly, they'd tell you to get out and don't come in until the sun comes up, until the sun goes down, correction. And that was it. You would go home, you'd come home, and there was no one there. As a little kid, six, seven years old, there's no one home. All right? They give you a key, you go inside, you lock the door, and that's it. And you wait. And you wait. And you wait. And you better have your homework done. Better have that homework done and ready by the next day. Gen X had hard childhoods. But regardless of this, they thrived. They've been working since their little hands could move. And not getting paid for it. I'm telling you that it was narcissistic abuse. And what does Gen X do? They don't sit around crying to everyone and each other about their childhoods. No, they get to work. Because they know that the world is an evil, horrible, harsh place. And if you want to even have a shot at survival, you have to keep on pushing and pushing and grinding. It doesn't matter if you have one arm as a Gen Xer. God gave you two and he was fortunate enough to leave you at one. Now use it to the fullest, to your fullest advantage, all right? Before he takes that one away too. This is how Gen X were shaped. This is the reason why if all hell on earth breaks loose, 
Gen X will be fine. You know, when, when New York City, from New York City to, to Michigan, had a blackout around 20 years ago, Gen X was throwing street parties while, while the boomers were huddled down thinking that it was the second coming of Christ. <laughs> oh, God. Guys, you have to understand that hard times create strong people. And it's the honest to goodness truth. I'm going to need to be the one to explain to all of the 40-year-old people and above, so 40-plus. Yo, you guys keep sending out these thumbs-up emojis, and they look more like this to the Gen Z and Millennials. Yo, we depict the thumbs-up as a f It's rude. You're, You're young, so maybe nobody's told you this yet or not. Uh, most of those 40 and above people that you're talking to, that you're probably talking about right now, are Gen Xers. Um, we don't give a fuck. Sorry, but we don't. Um, as a matter of fact, we used to try to hurt each other's feelings on purpose for fun in school. That's just what we do. That's how we passed the time. If that bothers you, you better strap in because most Gen Xers are going to figure out what bothers the shit out of you and do it even more. Um, you might want to pass that information on to the baby boomers. That Gen X has just disappeared in the abyss like... What are they doing? Your mysterious inquiries into the whereabouts of Gen X only highlights our perpetual state of invisibility. We've grown accustomed to being overlooked like yesterday's leftovers, except when it comes to family gatherings and free babysitting. Let me set the record straight. Are we working? You bet your avocado toast we are. We've been working since before our tiny little hands could tie our shoelaces. And we'll be working until we take the long dirt nap. Since we were kids, we've been shoveling the snow, mowing the grass, wrangling every unruly ankle biter in the neighborhood and running our own cleaning businesses. Because as kids, we didn't have the luxury of leisure. We were scrubbing toilets, mopping floors, dusting furniture and doing dishes from the meals that we cooked. So when it comes to family gatherings, barbecues and babysitting grandkids, excuse us if we're not jumping for joy. We've been there, done that and we're fucking tired. We've spent decades shouldering adult responsibilities, juggling other people's shit, and being the responsible ones. Now it's our turn to sit back and just enjoy a little peace and quiet. And as for the picking up the slack, honey, we've been hustling since before you knew what hustle meant. Holding down jobs, paying bills, and keeping the economy afloat before you were even a twinkle in your parents' eye. So you go ahead and pick up that slack, because it's not our slack to begin with. We've paid our dues, and as for actively participating in society, we are. We're just doing the things that we want to do and not what people expect of us. We're right here sipping on our cocktails, taking long naps, and enjoying the sound of sweet, sweet silence. You know, guys, I tell you, Gen Z, they've made it clear that they're going to keep on, you know, messing around, and they're going to find out, you know, that the mantra for Gen X is, leave me alone, you know, and if you don't understand, leave me alone, then, they, then you're going to end up having to understand, mess around, find out. It's an unfortunate reality that Gen Z doesn't comprehend. Gen X just wants to be left alone. But Gen Z are a bunch of people who are lazy, they are entitled, and they don't they don't produce anything. That's why they're coming for Gen X, because they couldn't, you know, the millennials, are just trying, the, the boomers are trying to run it right off into the sunset with their bag of money that they've stolen and pillaged. <laughs> the millennials are broken, and, you know, and, and if, so, and then, and then Gen X are just minding their own damn business and want to be left alone. Because, you know, it's during hard times where some people become legends, all right? Of course, Gen Z, they're only going to become nuisances. I told you, the future of Gen Z is, uh, is stealing and squatting. What does this all really mean? It means that as the economy gets worse, as things get harder, Gen X will thrive because Gen X are survivors. I'm a survivor. You know, I'm going to make it. It's that Beyonce song. That's Gen X. Okay, we're going to survive. We are survivors. Gen Z, on the other hand, they're going to get lost. As soon as the power goes out, as soon as GPS isn't working anymore, they won't even be able to find their way homes. All right? They use they use GPS to get around their neighborhoods. They'll get lost and they'll get lost around the block from their house. Okay? They'll get lost across the street from their homes. Gen Z don't have the capacity or the capability to survive in the real world or in any world for that matter that does where, where technology is not constantly there to protect them and provide for them and you know consider their feelings the future for gen z is destitution and extraordinary hardship hardship as they're stealing and squatting for survival while gen x is thriving and making the best of hard times by the way guys if you're enjoying the content subscribe to the channel subscribe to our newsletter for my personal thoughts insights and a free copy of my ebook the blueprint 
for escaping the rat race. Click the link in the description to get your free copy. What do you guys think regarding all of this? Genetics were traumatized kids, but regardless of that, they survived and they thrived regardless. Let me know your thoughts, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA and walking away. And cheers.